Do you suffer from range anxiety? Heading out for a ride and worried you won't make it home? If this sounds like you, stay tuned to EMBN as we may have the answer. Yes, there is nothing worse than heading out on a ride and having to cut it short because you just haven't got the range. Modern e-bikes with their battery and motor tech have come on a long way, but what if you want to go for a properly long ride? Surely then, for such a task, the new breed of lightweight mid-powered e-bikes has got to be the one. So with that, we're going to find out in the only way I know how, an epic. And what better place to start than here at my local. Now today, I'm gonna to be taking the white E140 works on a ride I would normally reserve for my XC bike. I'll be heading here, there, and everywhere over the Mendip Hills, my home stomping ground, where we'll cover everything from single track, rolling hills, open moorland, and gruesome climbs. I've not set a distance as I'll be going until the bike can't anymore, but I'm hoping it's far and there will be plenty of climbing. Huh, on that note then, with a backpack full of snacks, Battery's fully charged, let's go riding. All right, we've hit the first hill climb and it's a big long, it's about 220 metre climb. Now obviously, we wanna see how far this bike can go. So we're going up in Eco. Who says you can't get a workout on an e-bike? And my heart rate's sitting about the 150, 155 kind of range at the moment on this climb. <laughs> oh no! Watch out for that bit, Louis. He's got. Oh, that wasn't as deep as I thought. The epic is uh, we're throwing up all kinds of weather. It was looking nice and dry at the bottom, and now it is not. Ooh. Okay, now, before we get too far in our ride, I thought we'd do a bit of a bike and a kit check. Now, for reference, I am 88 kilos, fully laden as you see me today with the backpack on, six foot tall, and I'm gonna ride this, the white E-Lite 140 Works, like a normal bike. Now, what that means is I'm not gonna be putting it in eco all the time and never venturing it out. I'm not gonna be turning it off to save battery. If there's a kick and a horrible hill, heck, I'll go into it trail or turbo modes, I'm gonna ride it as it should be ridden because, well, I think that's what all of us do. It's all very well putting it in eco and turning it off all the time just for maximum distance, but that ain't realistic. But let's look at the bike a little more. So this is it and the white E-Lite 140 works. Size large, I'm six foot as I said. There's 135 rear, 140 up the front. It's got the Bosch Performance Line SX motor giving out 55 newton meters of power. There's a 400 watt hour battery internally and I've got the Bosch Powermore 250 watt hour range extender on there as well. So white label this bike as sort of an XC trail end of the scale and the claimed weight in a size medium is a staggering 16.4 kilograms. That's insane. This then is White's lightest ever e-bike that they've made and some good thought has gone into it, like this. The Bosch Powermore range extender, they've tried to situate as low into the bike as possible to help keep that nice low center of gravity. And bonus, you can still take a water bottle, which for a bike that is designed about doing big epic rides is absolutely essential. And I, so I really like that. And actually, if you didn't run the Powermore extender, you could run a water bottle there as well and a bigger one at that. Now the UK winter time is a harsh place. Now trust me, I've ridden many a miles in it over the years, but why have thought about that? and any other maybe particularly wet country as well. And they've come up with a few nifty little sort of bonus features on the frame to help keep the crap at bay, like this rubber collar around the seat tube here just to stop anything going into the frame or building up. You've also got these uh, blanking plates on the head tube. Now what that's gonna do is you can run either internal headset routing or external, but if you run it internal, it means that you're not just gonna have holes in the frame. And what I also like is that there's a high and low position on the geometry here with their new Shape It V2 link as well. Holy 
This is disgusting. This is, as I said, British winter time. A little more assistance needed through here. Minging. <laughs> oh my days. All right, eco. We're gonna need trail. Oh, there we go, lovely. Thank God for a tea. Stop, for sake, I was gasping. All right, well, might as well crack on. Oh, it's gross. Oh. 20 kilometers in, everybody. We've just surpassed that mark. We're about an hour and a half. I've climbed just woo over 500 meters. Average and heart rate around the 120, so still a good workout. And we're starting to dip in. Sort of that trail mode, oh, a little bit more because it's so muddy. So all these kinds of things, obviously, you know, outside temperature is not too bad, but the mud and the, you know, the heavier going uh, does make things tougher on the motor. I mean, look at the bike. Grim. I've not really talked about these mid powered bikes much. I've ridden a few in my time and this one, is a very pleasant surprise. That Bosch SX motor is actually a nice deliverer of power. We are down a bar, so we are around the maybe 70% or so. But anyway, I gotta check out. Big climb coming. Side. Okay, I thought this is a, a good spot for a quick catch up because look how scenic it is. In the distance over there, that's Hinkley Point Nuclear Power Station in there. You can't quite see it, but it is there. You got the Quantox. If you go that way, it's over to Afan Forest in Wales. And we're up to 27.76 kilometers and I've had to utilize turbo a little bit. It does mean we've climbed 830 meters and we've been going for a moving time of two hours. So those are some pretty good, pretty good stats. Now, the thing that I think is making a big effect on today's ride is the fact that it's so muddy. Like you can see just all of this, just cl like clogging up the bike, extra weight. It's also slowing down with wheels spinning away. So I think those kind of numbers are actually pretty positive for such a, a lightweight bike. It does though mean that I've still got three bars of battery left. Now I reckon that's not far off dropping a two and a half. So with that, we better get cracking on. Cameraman's hanging in, that's what we like. Here we go, perk of a lightweight e-bike. We'll have that over there. Boom, boom. Banging, I ain't doing that with my full fat. You've got nice hair, can I borrow some? Come here, hey. We're on two orange bars. What does that mean, Louis? We're nearly done. Yes, two orange bars. That means the end is inside. I think that means we're down to the last 30%, if I am correct. But we're heading towards now one of my favorite bits of downhill to end on.
Like many things in life, we have finally come full circle and are back where we started, albeit considerably later in the day. We managed a total of 51 kilometers today with 1,400 meters of climbing. This battery ain't dead. No, there is still one bar left on the screen and I'm in turbo. So there is definitely scope to probably squeeze another five, 10K out of it. Now, as well, I just want to sort of roughly touch on what modes I use. So I probably spent 50% of my time in eco, 40% of the time in trail and 10% of the time in turbo. This then has been the biggest ride I've ever done on a lightweight e-bike, the most I've ever ridden one. And I'll be honest, at the beginning of the ride, I was skeptical and optimistic all at the same time because I didn't really know what to expect. You know, I've blasted them around a few laps, but I've never really gone out on a proper adventure of a ride. Needless to say, at the end then, thoroughly impressed of what these kinds of bikes can do. This kind of bike, you know, if you approach it like you're on a full fat e-bike, it's not that. There's no point sort of trying to dress it up to be something it's not. It is made for doing single track rides, blasting out big epics. You know, a ride I've done today, which would take me hours and hours on my normal bike, I've done in probably half the time on this bike. I've still got a good workout and I've still been able to explore with my trusty cameraman by my side there, you know, all over the Mendips. A bike like this then is clearly aimed at sort of that person that is kind of halfway between coming off of a normal bike, should we say. It's also aimed at the person that does want to still get a good workout. You want that feeling of riding a normal bike and you want to be able to get a good workout and munch those miles rather than just putting in park laps. And that's completely fair enough. I understand that totally. If you're looking for a bit more of a bruiser, like I said, there's the 150 model of this. So it's a little bit more travel. Do you know what? And I think that could obviously appeal to a lot of people as well. But this, a very lightweight package, bang on. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. Where do you stand when it comes to these mid-range lightweight e-bikes? I tell you what, we could keep going. We could actually just swap out another range extender and have another 250 watt hour battery on there. You'd literally keep on going. But yeah, comments below, let me know. What do you think? Mid-power lightweight, is it the one for you? Or are you a full battery or nothing else? Let me know. See ya.